Probably the most unusual design decision that I made in my game was to not have trains specify waypoints and calculate paths themselves. Rather, I have players set the directions that trains are allowed to go at every train signal. I like this because it makes the control logic have a physical location in the map instead of being in a list in the train. Fortunately, it isn't necessary to modify most signals because the default of every path being available to travel along is often sufficient. The problem is that it's more difficult to understand where the train is actually going to go without some help. Therefore, I've added several features to highlight the routes taken, making them easier to understand, visualize, and modify. The end result is intuitive, visually pleasing, and fun to play with. The goal in Steam Revolution is to deliver goods between industries and cities. In addition to trying to complete a level, an optional goal is to design an efficient system that has a low cost and where time taken is part of the cost. Designing good routes for the trains to take is an important aspect of the design. The path that a train is going to take is determined per block and per signal within that block. If no other information has been specified, then trains will take all of the possible routes through a block. To restrict which possible exits can be taken, you can click the Add Route button and then a destination signal, and it will say that that signal can be reached from the input signal. Alternatively, you can remove a signal from the list of destinations, and if none were selected in the first place, then that means that all of the remaining signals are going to be destinations. This is essentially a shorthand way of selecting all of the exits except for one. The overall route that a train takes, then, is the interaction between all of the blocks and the signals at the blocks. The train depots are one-to-one -one with the routes, and this is another example of where there is a visual indication on the map for the control logic. By selecting a train depot, you're then also selecting the route. If you open the menu for the depot, you can then specify different things about the route. You can specify the number of trains that follow that route. You can specify the cars that are in the trains, and also the color and name of the route. If you don't specify a name, then the default name is simply the list of the different cargoes that are transported. When you have a route selected, then making modifications to the signals only modify that selected route. Also, to make things easier to understand, all of the possible paths the train can take are highlighted with the colors that you've selected for that route. Another useful feature that I added is that you can specify the depots to wait for an industry to have produced something before it releases trains. If you first click on a depot, then you can click the button for a wait dependency, and then click on the industry or the storage area that you want to wait for. This prevents a bunch of empty trains from zooming around the map and wasting fuel. Also, since the storage buildings can be used to deliver fuels to trains, then this also prevents trains from consuming fuel before there's any fuel supply to keep them running. There will be lots of routes, and you probably don't want to edit each one individually all of the time. For this reason, I added the ability to have multi-selection of routes. Whenever you make a modification to a signal when you have multiple routes selected, then all of those routes will get the same modification. If, for a given signal, all of the routes have the same exit, then that exit will be drawn as a solid line. If none of them have that exit, then no line will be drawn. And if some of them, but not all of them, have that exit, then it will be drawn as a dashed line. The colored paths of all of the routes are shown at the same time that are selected. This allows you to tell when they're branching and diverging and how they're interacting. It also has a nice aesthetic where it kind of looks like one of those metro maps. In the world map, there may be hundreds of routes, though. In a situation like that, it can be difficult to determine what routes even pass over a given piece of track, or what routes are available in a given area. For that reason, I've made a couple of tools to help narrow things down. The first is that the list of routes that are shown in the list on the left 
only shows the routes that are actually visible in the camera at the given moment. This means that if you zoom out in the map, then it will be a long list. But if you zoom into a region, then it will get narrowed down until there's perhaps only 10 or fewer routes visible. Even then, it might be inconvenient trying to select routes from the list. So I also provide an ability to click on the track, and then all of the routes that pass through that part of the track are then selected. One thing this does is make a great tool to visualize what parts of a track are being used by what, and to help visualize the route setup. It's also a much faster way to select routes to do larger scale edits. For example, if you change how the signals or a junction work in an area, you might then need to modify all of the different routes that pass through that junction. This is done fairly easily by clicking on the piece of track that enters that junction, and then you can see all of the routes and determine is something looking wrong or not, and you can then narrow it down and fix it. You can remove routes from the selection by shift-clicking on the routes in the list on the left, or you can add them using the same method. Next, I'll go into more detail about how I implemented things. But first, if you could take a moment to like and subscribe for future updates, it really helps the channel. I'll outline how I store and find all of the possible routes for display. I have a simple data structure that I call the route mask. This is just an array of bytes where one byte is stored per route. If the value of a byte is 1, then that means that the route exists there, and if it's 0, then it means it doesn't. In theory, this only needs a bit instead of a whole byte, but it was simpler to implement with the bytes. There's also not that much data to where it's a real issue, but I could go back and I could compress it if I needed to later. Then, each track has two route masks, one for each of the directions along that track. It's important to keep track of the mask for each direction, because some of the tracks are bidirectional and some are not, and this data is going to be used for finding the pathing over the tracks. The algorithm for finding the possible taken paths is then a fairly simple breadth-first search. The first thing to do is clear all of the masks for all of the routes. Then we're going to calculate the pathing of each route individually. So for each route, we first need to find the initial segment that the route starts at, which is connected to the depot. That segment is added to the search queue. While there are any entries in the search queue, we'll process those entries in order. The first step is to remove the entry from the queue so that the queue gets shorter over time. Then, from that segment, we get the list of candidate paths that pass through a block. These candidate paths take into account the routing information that we specified at the signals. For each path, I then mark all the segments along the path as visited in the route mask. Then, the critical step is that if the final segment wasn't visited yet, then I'll add that segment to the search queue. Finally, once all of the route masks have been calculated, I can add the routes to tiles so that I can determine what routes exist in parts of a map for the camera view. Now that I've calculated where the routes are, I can draw them. Instead of drawing the material for the wood and metal rails, I draw with a simple route shader. I use one route shader material per route, and if there are multiple routes on a given piece of track, I split that into multiple meshes for the different routes. The main trick that I use is that the routes have a primary and a secondary color. So what I did is I extended the vertex data layout to specify two colors per vertex. These are used to indicate the primary and secondary colors. In the shader, I then sample from a texture where the red and the green color channels specify the mask for which color to use. I made a fairly simple mask where the primary color is in the middle and then the edges are the secondary color. In these code snippets, above I showed the vertex data layout as specified in D3D12. And in the bottom, I show the relevant bit of the shader that combines the different masks. I also took a capture so that you can see what the texture input looks like. You see that the red is the primary color mask, and the green is the secondary color mask. And you can also see that I've selected the route draw call, and that the terrain hasn't been drawn yet. 
I draw things in a general front to back order. So the terrain is generally below everything and is drawn last. In the end, I'm pretty happy with the results. The colorings remind me of the route lines and metro maps, and the dual colors give enough combinations for people to distinguish a fairly large number of routes. I find the selection and editing of the routes to be intuitive and fun. In other train games, I sometimes wish they would have a route highlight to make things easier to understand. In OpenTTD, the dreaded train is lost message means a painful hunt for a bad signal placement. In my game, if you select the route and you see that the train goes some crazy way at some signal, then you know that's where your problem lies. This video is a bit more about game design and not a technical deep dive like previous videos. But I still wanted to put a sprinkle of technical details for people who are into that. So let me know. Are you interested in the design stuff also? Or you just want hardcore algorithms and optimization details? Leave a comment and don't forget to like or subscribe if you haven't already.